Hello and welcome back to Boxing Social in association with Betfred. My name is Eamon Khan. We are here in London. Just concluded the Derek Chisora Kubrak Pulov 2 press conference with me. He's the one only featuring on the undercard. Black Thunder, or Black Panther, Kevin Ajaka. Kevin, first of all, how's life treating you? Yeah, life's good. Um, I've had a good camp. I'm in a good place mentally and physically and looking forward to Saturday night. Yeah, just watching you in videos and listening to you in the lead up to it, I, I feel a sense of a lot more being, not that you weren't beforehand, but just extra zoned in for your career, your fights moving forward. Is that a fair assessment to say kind of, of how you are? Yeah, it's always strictly business for me and um, I'm always zoned in. I'm always training as hard as possible and um, I look forward to this opportunity on Saturday night, a new, a new weight class, 154, and yeah. another title on the line. So I'm, I'm zoned in and I'm ready. What's the reason, in your own words, for the move down, uh, move down to the new weight class? And in terms of kind of how you feel your assets are played at the new weight, how do you feel it will, will kind of go going forward? Um, the reason it is I was making uh, middleweight a bit too easy. I wasn't a big middleweight. Um, very, I was strong at the weight, and uh, I think 154 is the weight that's probably suitable for me um, to get the best out of my potential um, and to use it to my best advantages, you know what I mean? I'm a strong, explosive fighter that's got good movement fast. And yeah, I feel like just carrying that power down that I had at 160 will be the biggest factor in 154. Even I remember seeing your opponent mass check in with Anthony Fowler uh, on the Lawrence Coley bill. Are you the type of fighter who watches your opponent on his tape on him or you just do what you do in the ring? Yeah, I watch probably a round or two of them. Um, see what they do and then that's enough for me um, yeah I've, I've seen what he does I know what he does I remember watching the Anthony's photo fight he's tough he'll come to fight and um, he'll probably bring out the best in, in me and, and be my hardest test to date there's a carrot that's dangling there as well in terms of him not ever being stopped before is that a goal in your mind as well to go at the weekend yeah without doubt I feel like um, I feel like there's no pressure on me to stop him I can relax more. I mm. wanted the 10 KO run that I was on. I was on seven. I wanted to get to 10. Mm. Um, that was ended my last fight because I, I went the distance. So there is no pressure. He's never been stopped. There's no pressure to stop him. But I feel like with that being said, it will bring out the best of me then. I can relax and let my, my shots flow. I don't have to go looking for him. He's someone that's going to be in my face um, and, and putting pressure on me. So I can box more and I can just let my hands go number of excellent fights and matchups that can be made in the super welterweight division do you have a, t a particular hit list or target that you want to face next or soon no i don't focus on anyone other but, but myself here my team put in front of me um, there's a lot of great names you've got uh domestically for me you've got spike O'Sullivan, sullivan luke keeler uh jason quigley in england you've got sam eglinton um troy williamson stuff like that so great great fights but they've got to make sense um got to be f for something, do you know what I mean? A European title, something like that. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't focus on anyone but myself. I don't call out fighters. Um, I'm not in competition with anyone but myself until they're in the ring with me. So yeah, there's, it's, a, it's a stacked division and I, I want to push on the European world level by the end of next year. I'm in top 10 in, in the world with the WBA at middleweight, fighting for the WBA international um, elite middle as well. So I want to carry that ranking down and um, put myself in a good position to fight for European world titles and whoever's put in front of me I'll be ready for. Can we just uh, get your thoughts on a couple of other things before I let you go? I saw a bit of uh, fireworks going off between Derek Trezor and Kubat Pull over there. What's your thoughts on the main event? Yeah, it's, um, it's going to be an exciting fight. One thing that you, you're guaranteed with um, Trezor is, is war, is explosive fights. And, you know, I mean, he, he comes and lays it all on the line. So it's two big lads going at it and it's a heavyweight division so I expect fireworks. Um, I genuinely feel like it's a 50-50 fight. Two, two lads that are kind of at must wins in their career. Yes. Um, where do they really go after this? So, yeah, I think um, it's going to be an exciting fight, but I'm rooting for Cesar. And uh, also, we get an Usyk AJ2 very, very soon. Your thoughts on that one? Yeah, I think um, it's going to be a very exciting fight. Uh, it's a boxer against puncher, just like the first one was. But I think AJ, he's got a new coach, and I really hope that he can adopt the style and... and be that brute AJ that he, w he once was before his first loss and um, I think in order to be successful in this fight and win he has to go out and hurt Usyk early, he has to go out and, and lay it on the line, don't care about getting knocked out, you get knocked out, you get knocked out, at least you've given it your all, don't coast to losing on points like he did the first time, go out, give it your all and um, show that real dog in you and, and put it on the smaller man.
Keeping a pleasure speaking to you. Thanks for speaking to Boxer Social. Looking forward to seeing you on Saturday. Thank you. Good man.